everyone, it's Farm Sim Guy here. Hope you're all doing well. We are here today to have a look at Agali Farms from Shane5465. Now, Agali Farms was a map that I really enjoyed on FS19, so delighted to tell you that it is coming back for FS22. It is almost finished in the last throes of testing and making sure that it's uh, all working before it's properly submitted to Giants for approval. But I thought you would like to have a little bit of a look around this because it is a really, really nice map. Very similar, feels very similar to Fairhead, of course, same part of the world, Northern Ireland. So um, great to see more, I guess, UK and Irish maps coming to the fore as well. We have been spoiled, I think, in FS22 with some really, really nice UK and Irish maps. So uh, very keen to have a look around this, show you what it's like and... Um, Let's get into it. So, of course, this is where you start when you load up the map for the very first time. We're in new farmer mode, so we'll go and have a look at the equipment you get in a little minute. But first and foremost, let's jump into the PDA and have a quick look at that. And there you have it. Um, sitting on the coast here, which is a nice touch. Uh, I really like that. We have got a very, let's call it a... Uh, um, animal or certainly cow led dairy farming led map lots and lots of grass to be cut there for silage to feed the animals uh, we have eight farms in total on the map uh, going from the bottom here we have got fraser's farm then we move over to cottage farm we've got killy bean farm then up here we have bally hill farm coxill farm over here we have lau farm um Scroggy Farm just here, and then last but by no means least, Agali Farm itself, where you start out. Now, in, in terms of field sizes, there's a nice mix actually, some very small ones. In fact, generally the map has got small fields on it, um, and as you can see, all contoured around the uh, the, the shape of the countryside. Very British thing to do this. No big square fields in the UK. They don't tend to be. Maybe some down on the south coast. But uh, to all intents and purposes, the fields have been here for hundreds of years and farmed the way they've been farmed for hundreds of years. So they follow the contours of the land um, rather than being big square fields. Um, so uh, let's have a look at some of the sizes of some of the fields, probably looking at field 14 there as your biggest. I think maybe seven gives it a run for its money here. And you'll see actually there's more than one field in these sections. So 14 there, two fields together. 240,000 though, not particularly expensive. 421,000 there for, for uh, the plot at uh, seven, uh, which includes fields 85, 86 and 84. And I should say that 86 fields in total on the map as well. So that gives you an idea for the size of the fields when you've got that many. Uh, you know they're not going to be massive fields. But um, that is your starter farm. You can see there in new farmer mode, uh, that block there, block three. Uh, which encompasses fields 21, 20, 30, and 22. So you've got a few to play with straight away. Um, in terms of sell points as well, not many on the map, uh, but you can get rid of most things on them. So you've got Agali stores here, down at the bottom, Agali wool, Agali wholesalers. You've got the sawmill just up here as well. Um, you've got the animal dealer here uh, with Agali grain and Agali dairies next to it. And... Um, I think that is it. That is it. Yes. Um, of course, if you want to, you can drop your own stuff in as well. So uh, not to say that uh, you can't add more in, but that's what you've got to start with. And like I said, predominantly this map is based around dairy farming, creating silage and silage work. So um, let's jump in. Let's have a little bit of a drive around. We'll look around each farm individually. We'll have a drive around and uh, find out what's what, but uh, just enjoy what is a actually a beautifully beautifully well put together map now you know where i come from when it comes to maps i i'm a big believer and you have to feel a map you've got to you've got to make sure that it's something that captures your imagination and wants you to play personally i like maps that feel authentic they feel real um and feel believable so um this straight away when you load it up and you have a look at it 100 percent, it feels like it feels like Northern Ireland and it feels like the UK type of farming. It feels like a real place. This is fictional, but um, that doesn't take anything away from it because it definitely feels like 
uh, a, this part of the world 100% um, actually reminds me a lot of where I come from at home as well. Now, um, a lot of you uh, I know have issues with narrow lanes. The, the lanes here are narrow and actually this entire map is incredibly small and tight. You'll see as we look through things. Uh, but let's go into here. This is Agley Farms. Uh, first and foremost, there's machinery everywhere. And, and I think that just goes to show you that is not a big combine, but look at it here. It is huge. Um, so uh, there's some of your starting equipment. We'll jump in. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Uh, but you've got a little bit of a shed there. Off the side of the shed here is a silage bunker. Just pull the HUD up there. You can see fill level and chaff there on the uh, menu at the top corner. Um, we'll come out of here as well. In fact, I'll leave the HUD up because it means you can see what I'm looking at on the map as well. Um, a bit more starting equipment here. You've got a fuel tank there. Open this here. You have got your uh, cattle shed. You can head through here. You don't have a full drive through cattle shed here. Um, but you can open the gate at the end here. They have got some grazing space out here as well. Um, again, I love little details like this. So common on uh, farms in the UK, just piles of rubbish everywhere. Um, but a nice little pasture there. You can go into here. You can wander around here again. The gate's open there. Let's open this gate as well. And you can go into the dairy. So very compact, very tight. Usually this is how they are in, the, in this part of the world. Uh, sometimes we're using old sheds that have been around for many many hundreds of years in some cases and you make them work alongside them so there you go let's head out um no animals yet we'll take 70 cows in total on this yard i think that's the same for um all the farms actually um there's no massive you know 100 200 500 uh head of cattle sheds on this map um, so we come around here, a little bit more storage. These low sheds as well, again, will potentially limit the type of equipment that you can put into them. There are, however, a few more sheds around here. So there we go. We've got a little bit more of that starting equipment there. We've got our uh, mechanics shop there as well. And uh, nice big space here with skylights in it as well, letting natural light in. Good reflections. That's nice, like that. Um, so let's head out of here, and again we have another outdoor silage bunker here, which is nice. Let's just jump in and have a look at things. Um, in addition, I've talked about silage a lot, but we have our standard crop types here. No additional crops on the map at the moment, um, and the crop calendar is pretty standard as well. There are contracts on the map, although at the moment we just have one showing. Again, that may change at different times of the year as well. So there you go. That is Agali Farms. That is where your milk is stored. So when you want to come and unload your tanker, that is where it will fill up with the cow's milk. Uh, I do love these dry stone walls. Lovely detail in them, actually. They are nicely done. And again, even little things like... Bits that have fallen away and been broken, that is uh, very common as well. Uh, they take a lot of upkeep, these uh, stone walls, so very nice indeed. That old uh, elevator there as well, just sitting there rusting away. Like I said, that little attention to detail is very nice indeed, I do like that. In fact, let's take this opportunity while we're here on the starter farm to just look at the equipment you get. So, um, there we go. Uh, two small tractors, two masses, and look at them. They are tiny tractors. Um, so that starts to give you an idea for how small and tight this map is. Again, that will be reflected in some of the machinery as well. Um, you've got the top liner as your combine harvester. You've got the nice class scorpion as your telehandler, followed up by the class carrot trailer there. Header for your combine. The very small Pottinger 3 furrow plow, um, just 1.2 metres. Good old 2.5 meter rape cultivator. Um, got your Nordston cedar. You've got a fertilizer spreader there. Um, slurry tank from Farm Tech. You've got the uh, K brand mower there. And then a very small Pottinger um, tedder, 4.4 meters width, and uh, the Samaz windrower, 8.4. That's quite big, to be fair. A uh, nice little Pottinger baler. So it is very small equipment, as you can see, very geared towards um, grass work. Uh, although 
you've kind of got most of the bases covered here, which is quite nice. So, bear that in mind. Um, I know a lot of people don't tend to start with starter equipment, but uh, it's always nice to see it, isn't it? So, um, we are going to get ourselves a little Land Rover, I think, and go for a little tour of the map and have a look at the other farms. Right, here we go. Here's our Land Rover and Northern Irish plates. Nice to see. Right, so let's head out of here. Now, I could turn straight away down this road here, but I'm not going to. We're going to come back to that. That is the route to Cottage Farm. But we're going to turn here and we're going to go to Fraser's Farm, which is the first farm we're going to visit on the map. So we're just going to run down here. Nice long road down here, gravel track, all the way down to Fraser's Farm. And while we're driving, it gives you a chance to see some of the nice detail. Look at that stream with the rocks in it. Very nice indeed. And the size of some of the fields on our left here. Um, like I said, not huge, but not tiny either. They're kind of in keeping with the map. Think Court Farms and the size of those fields, and you're probably not a million miles off it. So... Uh, run down here, but again, just lovely view over into the distance. The lighting on this is very nice as well. Um, and there we go, a couple of smaller fields. Again, the fact that you can see the other farms as well is really nice. And of course, we're going to have a look at all of those. Uh, but we can run down here, there's the farmhouse. And we are at Fraser's Farm here. So let me just jump into the map, give you an idea uh, for your bearings. So there we are, down in the bottom left-hand corner. Um, so we'll head back up after we've had a look at this. We'll head back up and then we'll head straight down, have a look at this, and probably have a look at some of these cell points down here as well. Right, let's leave that. You've got a nice yard here, big space to turn around, tractors and things like that, which is good. This is your cow pasture linked to your cow shed. Let's pop the cow shed here. Two doors. You open separately like so. Uh, then you go again another relatively small cow shed you can go right through this one though which opens out into a field which actually isn't part of the cow pasture so um, if you want access there's the cow pasture where your cows will roam about this is quite a large field actually it bends all the way around the corner there so a nice size field this already planted with grass growing but you've got a gate entrance there as well and again you can see over into the distance Big field, 56 straight ahead of you there, right up to the border of the map. And I do like the fact that when you're down at this level, um, playing around on the map, the, the border is very nice. It's something, a little bit of a bugbear of mine, when borders aren't nice and tidy on maps, just kind of, when you fall off the end of the world, it just kind of loses some of the realism for me. Um, there we go, there's a silo for the milk as well. And if we go along here... Again, as I was talking to you before, like traditional old buildings on farms that have been there for hundreds of years, maybe not ideal or perfect for use now, but they don't tend to knock them down. They're always used for storage or workshops or things like that. We've got a fuel tank there, and you've got a storage shed here with a workshop in it. So again, you can pop this, and there we go. A little workshop and space to store tractors. This is not a silage bunker, as you can see in the top corner there. And again, you've got another smaller shed here. Again, watch the height of these. It will not fit a lot of machinery in uh, because they are so low. Um, and again here, a little bit of a storage space down the side of the shed here. Very similar to an Agley Farms. And then you have got your main silage bunker here. You can see their fill level chaff in the top corner. Right, there you go. That is farm number one. Fraser's farm. Right, so let's head back out of here and let's go to the second farm, which is Cottage Farm. And in fact, look, if I stop there, just we rise up the hill there, you can see all the hedges, you can see some of the other farms, look, you can even see the cliffs there, and you can see the water of the sea. So, uh, nice little touch there. These hedges are really nice too. You can drive through the hedges, again, a la Court Farms, a little bit of a a rise in that one but you can get through these if you need to there's also gates if you're that way inclined right here we go heading back to the road again lovely little touches like these old derelict buildings again vintage buildings from years gone by that are no longer used but nobody's really knocked them down they've just kind of 
being reclaimed by the land over time. Right, let's turn down here and we'll head to Cottage Farm. So here we are, this is Cottage Farm. This is a nice farm as well. Again, different layout to the last one. Um, kind of jumped out in the hedge there. Old traditional single story building, uh, very nice. Again, you'll start to see some repetition of the sheds here and the style of sheds, which is fine, but kind of arrive in this yard, some nice storage there, probably a, a better storage there for tractors and on the other yard. Again, we'll pop this here. This is your animal shed, very similar to the one on Fraser's farm. So that's nice. Um, got another door here, which we can... We can't pop. That one is not openable. Um, but let's go around to the other side. Let's pop this gate here. Again, things like old cement mixers and things like that. Just give the map character, right? And we'll open this one, which opens towards us. Even the old stone gate post as well. Very nice. And then you head around here. Um, that is the back of the cattle shed. We've got another open silage bunker there should we need it um and like i said very very leaning towards grass work this map as you would expect um let's open this again recognize these sheds now from the other farms but uh, again more storage there and then gates out into the field and let's just open this and just look at the view out over into the distance there very nice indeed and again old traditional stone buildings there and there's Fraser's farm just over there so things are very close by it is a tight small map which I kind of like right let's head over and check out Killy Bean Farm I think next actually before we go to Killy Bean Farm I've just realized that we have another shed over here so we should probably take you in and let you have a look at this too this is a, a nice big shed again if you're thinking of uh Doing a bit more arable work. You've got a really nice big storage shed there for machinery. It opens out to this nice big field here. Again, more grass growing. Grass everywhere. Right, just jumping back to the map to give you your bearings. There we are at the moment, Cottage Farm. We're going to go to Killy Bean Farm, but before we do that, we'll just go and have a look at these two stores so you've seen them as well. The Wholesalers and Agaly Wool as well. Right, just sitting here waiting for traffic, and as you can see... It comes through at a rate of knots, so you've got to have your wits about you. But here we go. Right on the edge of the map here. We have got Agaly stores and Agaly wool where you can sell your produce. So, very nice. Right, we're going to go... In fact, you know what we'll do? We'll run around the bottom of the map here after that white Audi. And this should take us to Killy Bean Farm. And again, nice winding road there, and again, gives you an idea and a view across the map, which is very nice. Right, let's push on and get to Killy Bean. When I say push on, here we are, we're arriving at it already. Again, just gives you an idea for how, how close everything is on this map. Um, it's great that he's managed to fit uh, eight whole farms into this. So again, different layout here, but equally as nice. This is nice, a uh, nice big shed here. In fact, we'll park up here and we'll jump out and have a wander around here. There we go. Lovely open shed there. Different cattle shed here, which is nice. Let's pop this door. Like I said, bigger setup here. Right, we'll open up the other end of it as well. And again, big uh, big storage there for your slurry. This is definitely a much bigger enterprise here. Another cow shed here. And then here, I'm going to guess, we have got a very big silage bunker. So, um, slightly bigger operation tucked away down in the corner here. I like this farm. Very nice indeed. Uh, split over both sides of the road as well, which is quite nice. But there you go. There is another couple of sheds down at the bottom I'll show you. But here we go. We're just going to go in off the main road. You've got a lovely uh, 
workshop there. There's your milk tank as well. This is just nicely laid out. I like this. The old sheds there leading to the nice farmhouse. So uh, beautiful. Do like this uh, farm. Very nice indeed. Right. We've pulled out of Killy Bean here. Where that red car's just going, you cannot get anywhere. It is uh, a dead end. So we're going to head up a little way here. And I think our next stop might be the sawmill. Right, just arriving at a junction here. Let's just turn in here. And here we have the sawmill. Lovely big piles of logs sitting there. Looking good. A lot of space to move around in here. So if you're into trees, this is the place for you. Although there isn't masses of trees on this map, you could still find yourself a little bit of logging work. Or if you're just going to clear a few trees on your farm to get through things, you could do that as well. Right, again, I'll jump back in just so you can get your bearings. But on next farm, you can see it just ahead of us there. So there we are at the sawmill. We are going to run up right up the edge of the map here and we're going to end up at Bally Hill Farm. So let's just pull out here. Now that is the junction we came from. If you go down that road there, you'll end up back at Agley Farms, where we started out. We're going to run up here and look at that. Look at that view across the valley. Isn't that nice? Very nice indeed. Right, here we go. And again, it's not much of a drive. Um, narrow gates as well. But um, if you're thinking you're going to get a case quad track in here, think again. It is a really tight map, which I, for one, really like. I like the challenge of it. I like uh, the potential to really think about how and why you do stuff in a certain way. So let's stop here. Let's jump out. There you go. That's an interesting old way of uh, having a slurry pit just with the vents out of the side of the building there you don't get many of them these days but nice to see a nice way of doing it very good and uh, you would just drop a pipe in there and suck that out with a uh, with a slurry tanker old school right let's have a look through here though just a shed in here bit of storage i think that might be animals there actually got another shed here for storage and I think we've got an access point we do we have another drive just in here to get you around to the back we've got a bunker there got a fuel tank there we go tipping tipping ramp that's quite a steep tipping ramp though that isn't it if this is indeed a bunker and it is look fill level chaff zero percent but uh and there's your runoff. That's a, that is an interesting... It's a tight yard, this. Crikey. I'm going to have some fun getting around in this. I like it, though. Good fun. Brilliant. Okay. Let's jump back in the landy and let's head to the next farm. Right, just reverse out there and let's just follow the road round. I believe the next farm we come up to is Coxhill Farm. Um, which, in fact... There's the BGA. I think it's just near the BGA. So let's roll around here. Let's follow the road. Just keep an eye open for a uh, for a turning. I think we might have to go a little bit further up and almost double back on ourselves. Um, there we go. There's a lovely little bit of windy road here, just on a climb as well. This is nice. Look at that. We've got a little bit of a uh, look down into the valley there. And that is Coxhill Farm there with the BGA attached to it. And I think if we just go up here, we can just double back slightly on it. Yep, there we go. There's the junction. So let's turn in here. And there is the road just there. So we'll run down here, off the tarmac, onto the gravel, follow the road round. So again, this feels like a bigger bigger job. Um, we've got a little shop in there, fuel tank again. 
Very small storage in here. Potentially our uh, pump there for the BGA. Uh, there we go. Slurry tank. Couple of big sheds. Uh, are these both? Yeah, I think these might both be silage clamps for the BGA. Yep, there we go. But we've got the space here. I'm not sure if we've got animals here. Or oh, this is just, um, I guess, a kind of operational farm for uh, the BGA. Although, no, we do have... Look, we've got animals here. So it is both. It is a farm and the BGA mixed together. There you go. Nice cow yard here. Rusty old bent gates. Nice to see that. Very authentic. There we go. So you can feed your cows, run things through there as well. Very nice. Right, let's head on back and see where we're going next. I think next up we've got the animal dealership and a couple more of the sell points. Yeah, so there we go. That is the farm we're at at the moment, Coxhill Farm. Uh, and we're going to come out of this driveway, as you can see, quite a long driveway, and we're going to run down this road here to where we have got Agley Grain, Agley Dairies, and the Animal Dealer, which will then take us down to Scroggy Farm or Scroogy Farm. And then we've really only got the one farm up here, Lough Farm, still to go. So let's do that now. So there we go. Nothing really to report here. A couple of milk tanks. We've got grain silos. There's your tip points in there. Nice to see a big pile of grain in the grain shed there as well. Nice touch. And I think around the other side there's another entrance in here, probably for the other cell point. Oh, that's the animal yard, of course. The animal dealer's here as well. So see the icon for that there. And then you just roll down here a few hundred meters and you are at Scroggy Farts. There we go. You start to see a pattern to these farms now in terms of the sheds that they're using and things like that. Let's just park up on the verge here. Have a little nosy round here, but open silage clamp there. Again, storage sheds just here. Uh, bigger storage shed there. That's where your animals will go. You've got a uh, diesel tank through there and another storage shed. So quite a lot of storage here, which is quite nice. And it opens right up straight onto the field here, which is a little bit different as well. That is nice. But there you go. Nice, simple farm, that. Very good indeed. Right, okay, over to Lau Farm now. And we'll probably drive past the shop as well on the way. And then really after that, uh, there is one more sell point. Uh, but we'll drive down the coast. We'll have a look at the seaside as well. And then we'll head back to Agalee Farms. So here we are, Junction, look at that. View of the seaside. Lovely. Let's roll out of here. And into the sell point. Very basic shop. But again, they can be a little bit like that. The stores of these uh, local dealers. Um, but a nice big area here if you're buying stuff for it to spawn in without you causing yourself any problems. Just check to see if this opens as a shed as well. That'd be quite cool. I wonder if there's a, a bit of a shop in here. No, that does not open. Possibly if you owned it, it might. Let's just try this one as well. Oh, so this is purely decorational. Just one last try of this door, but I don't think that one's going to open. No. So, there you go. That is your store, and I think you get your spawn vehicle in here. Let's just spawn something, actually, just to make sure that that is exactly where things spawn. Let's take a little Massey. Have I got enough money to buy this? Right, there we go. Let's just hit the buy button there. And jump back, and it should be there. There it is. Okay, good stuff. Right, let's jump in and check out this last farm. So there we are, up there. We're going to go to Lau Farm now, and then the only other sell point is Agley Stores down there, but I want to drive down here because I want you to see this coastline as well. Again, as we just drive up here to Lau Farm, you can see, again, some of the fields and the areas. This is your bigger fields. This is the biggest part of the map here in terms of purchasable fields. 
Look at that one there, 85, just there. Definitely the biggest single field on the map. A very bumpy drive, goodness me. Well, you need to get the leveler out on this drive, don't they? Crikey, I like that though. The old Land Rover suspension working overtime, probably going to break at some point. And Lau Farm here is literally one shed. No farmhouse or anything. Literally one shed. So there you go. Maybe something you want to expand into these fields. Maybe build uh, build your own uh, farm out from here. But we'll just jump over the wall there. Because as we're here, we're right on the coast. So let's wander down here. And what I like about these is they just merge into the edge of the water. Which is lovely. So you've got a little sandy beach here. Look at that. How nice is that? Imagine running a tractor on these fields. You'd feel very at home, wouldn't you? I like the lighting on this map as well. It's very good. So there you go. A little bit of uh, the Northern Irish coast there. Looking out to sea. I like that a lot. Very homely indeed. Okay. On that note, let's jump back in the landy. We'll head down just so you've seen that last sail point, and then we'll head back to Agley Farm and uh, have another chat. Right, we're just heading down the main road here. Well, I'm not sure if it's a main road or not. The biggest road on the map, anyway. And we are about to pull into the final sail point here, which is Agley Stores. Um, again, let's just jump back to the map. There you go, Agley Stores, just on the corner of the map there, and this is just one big shed, which will take most of your uh, crops and uh, other stuff, other production stuff. Not any productions on the map, but you can, of course, add your own. There you go, the tip point, uh, the cell point, just inside the door here. Um, and there we go. Right. Let's run back to the main farm. But there we go, past those derelict buildings that we drove past to get to Fraser's farm first thing. You can see the odd little uh, house sitting in the fields as well and things like that. And we are back at the main farm. So there you go. A whistle stop tour of Agley Farm. It is really nice. It's just got that kind of immersive feel about it. I could see you getting sucked into a whole little storyline on this and playing for ages. It's uh, it's really fun. Uh, and I like the fact that, you know, you've got a mix of small, large fields. It's tight. There's not much distance to travel between the farms. The fact there's eight farms on it as well is nice. You could have a cracking little multiplayer server with this as well. If uh, you just wanted to work a farm and, and, and have an easy life, looking after a few animals and looking after the land you've got. But uh, there you go. Um, that is Agley Farms from Shane5465. And it is a beauty. Like I said, very close to being ready. So keep an eye out for it. Um, I'm sure it will be coming very, very soon. Unfortunately, I don't have any information on whether or not it's coming to all platforms or not. Um, but I don't see anything particularly on the map that would suggest it couldn't come to all platforms so we'll just have to wait and see on that one but for now from me i hope you enjoyed this i really like this map it's very cool but that's it take care and i'll see you again very soon bye for now